the completeness or lack thereof, or rather, sorry, functionality or lack thereof of any given genome. And, and I don't want to go too far down ENCODE just because we talked about it so much last right. time. Um, but I want, did... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, I did take your advice and I looked into what they, the work that they were doing on those knockout tests, because you, you posed a good question to me. You said, okay, well, if we know that most of the genome isn't functional and in and, and conventional geology ENCODE nonwithstanding, usually what I have heard, at least on, in textbooks and things like that, functionality means that it, that it impacts phenotype. Um, so sheer transcri transcription outside of the realm of ENCODE is not typically considered functional. And so you asked me, um, we were talking about knockout tests for mice, because I had said to you, well, you know, they do these big knockout tests in mice where what they do is they, they artificially go in for the audience's sake, and they knock out a bunch of genes, pump, 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 like that. And then they see what happens. You know, can the mouse right. still reproduce? Um, and they do this usually um, in vitro. So it's like, can the mouse still reproduce? Does it have normal arms? Does it have a normal tail? And I looked into it, and they managed to, the, the extent that they have gone to is they knock, they can knock out half the entire genome of the mouse and of the, the what is considered the junk DNA. Um, right. And it's, it, it is still, like, running around doing its deal. Well, I, know, I, so. and, and, yeah, and that's a good, I wasn't going to point to um, function just yet. We could talk, I was going to point to something else as a way to draw the line. But since you did bring that up, yeah, I would say I do have a study here where what they did was they knocked out junk DNA of a mouse. Um, and you're right, there were some experiments where the uh, mouse offspring were just fine. But they've also done multiple experiments to see if they corroborate that. Um, but what they found was that I believe there was uh, some long non-coding RNA gene knockouts that actually showed uh, lethality that were associated with um, the development. I think it was tissues such as the lungs, the heart, the testes even the brain, for example. Um, and even when they knock out certain uh, classes of retrotransposons in, in the mouse embryo, the mouse embryo, when it's uh, when that uh, jumping gene is turned on, the mouse suddenly dies, which shows the importance of uh, certain in various classes of uh, retrotransposons. But what I said in the previous debate as well was that many um, non-coding uh, RNA genes, even pseudogenes, are only expressed under certain conditions that are not, um, unfortunately, are not available in uh, lab type settings. But redundancy, I mean, even if you're seeing some genes that are knocked out and the mouse is just fine, I mean, redundancy is, is an amazing thing. I mean, it, it, in computer code, redundancy is highly beneficial. How does evolution explain um, redundancy, for example? Natural selection sees the long term. That's what or natural selection sees the short term. So how does a natural selection help evolve something like uh, redundant uh, redundancy in, in the genome? Go ahead. Well, yeah, well, conceptually, and I don't know, I wouldn't, I would need to take some time to look into the technical papers on this, but I can answer you from a, from a, from a conceptual standpoint, sure, which is you're right. Natural selection works, works in the short term. In fact, there is nothing, um, there is no kind of, of gene that, that, you know, is partially really naturally selected. And I want to explain what I mean by that. Um, yeah, it's either, yeah, it's either bad and it's selected. It's kind of fickle, I suppose. But mm -hmm. I would encourage you to look into the concept of precursor mutations, because I think they have quite a bit of bearing on co-option. They're certainly yeah. not the same thing, but essentially the idea of a precursor mutation is that um, you, you, you know, I, I can't remember who did it, but that there's one guy who has like this classic example of the mousetrap where he removes, you know, most of the parts of the mousetrap for it to be a functioning mousetrap. And he's like, it makes a really ugly tie clip. So the idea is that every single stage in, in the concept of precursor mutations, if you're trying to get a complex structure or behavior or length of, gene, of DNA, whatever, but every sort of subsequent step is useful in some way. You get what I'm saying? So right, this yeah. this has, and I know this has been done to to quite a bit of success with with um, uh, the flagella, but I don't know if it's been done with what you're talking about here. So I would love to look into done, it. Yeah. I, I very much imagine it's going to be the same type of scenario. Sure. And I would love to look at those papers too, just to kind of go uh, down deep in it. You know what I mean? I want to see how much of it is empirical, how much of it is uh, philosophy, because I think for evolution accounting for you know DNA repair and the redundant mechanisms, for example, that we see in, in the genomes. Those redundant mechanisms, as it looked like you agreed um, with, is it requires forward thinking when we know that natural selection works in, in the short term. So it's like th there's so many things in the genome that evolution would have to account for. And I'm willing to look at those papers, but you're looking at self-organization. You're looking at the communication between the cells with other cells. Yeah, um, I mean, with, with that, though, you're talking about about the evolution of sort of complex behaviors and, and what spurs that. 
um, I, I was inter- I heard an interesting, I was listening to an interesting podcast the other day that covered how behavior, um, behavior always comes before morphologic change. Um, and I, and I believe that that is, is sort of amplified even to a very small degree. Um, but yes, I, we'll, we'll have to, yeah. to swap papers on that yes. and look a bit more into it. I, I did want to make